important uh, component of vision, uh, and that is it has to be mixed with faith in our heart. Come on. Amen. And so as we come tonight, Shelly and I, uh, come, we just want to commend you uh, for mixing the word of the Lord with faith in your heart. That's right. You know, the, the Bible says that God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for hope or think. Now, as most, many of us have seen uh, the vision begin to unfold this week, uh, the coming together of uh, leaders from around the world uh, to see the heart of Jesus released and even a new and a powerful way. I know that was a portion of the vision uh, that was there. Uh, but also, tonight we're coming together for another portion of that vision. Uh, and that vision was to uh, not let it be a week-long event, uh, but let there be a time uh, to release a newness of equipping and teaching and causing the anointing of the apostolic and prophetic uh, to begin to flow. And so I feel as we've come together tonight for you, uh, Fred and Wilma, uh, that uh, not only is it a commissioning of you individually, but it's a commissioning of the vision uh, that God has with us, uh, even from before the foundations of the earth. And how many know that to have a Fred and Wilma and Flintstones, there has to be some predestination in that? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, Fred and Wilma, uh, uh, Fred's uh, come to become a great friend of mine, and, and Wilma, actually this is the first time we've met face to face, we've seen a lot of prophetic words uh, uh, out your way, but uh, it's wonderful to meet you uh, personally. Uh, but how do you know that they have a transgenerational ministry? Come on. All right? Uh, they've ministered to the youth, they've ministered to children uh, for many years. Uh, how many have ever ministered to children and youth? I know you got to run fast to keep ahead of them. I heard a story that I was talking about a, a little boy in a Sunday school class and the youth ministers and ministered all week about uh, the foundations of the Lord and being born again and uh, being water baptized and filled with the Spirit. And, and finally they asked this one little boy at the very end of the week, uh, Johnny was his name, he was always kind of a rambunctious little guy. And they said, Johnny, uh, what did you learn this week about all the kind of the doctrines of the Lord? And Johnny said, I learned that you can't baptize a cat. <laughs> I learned you can't baptize a cat. Right? I know that some things happen by experiential revelation. <laughs> now, we're believing that there's going to be experiential revelation, that we're going to come to know Jesus in a new and greater way uh, than ever before. Uh, so, we're excited to stand with you tonight uh, in this commissioning service, and we're believing for a fullness of the launching. A vision that God has purpose within your heart uh, to run with it and a fresh pace and with the strength of the Lord uh, tonight. Amen? Amen? Amen. And with that, I'd like to introduce our commissioning uh, speaker tonight uh, to you. Uh, Dr. Bill Hammond is the uh, founder of Christian International Come Ministries, a uh, network of ministers uh, from really around the world, uh, on every nation, every continent. Uh, he's the author of seven major books, many other uh, publications, uh, but he's known as the father of the prophetic around the world. Uh, been in crusades in the Philippines uh, with over 2 million people, people there. Uh, he's pioneered a pathway uh, for many to run with vision. Uh, he, the, uh, part of the oldest uh, aspect of the ministry has actually been our Bible college and education network that goes back over 30 years now. Uh, but uh, he is here tonight uh, to serve and act as a commissioning speaker uh, to launch this vision uh, that God is birthing tonight. We believe it's going to be a new one. It's going to be a fresh one. It's going to be different than 100 years ago. It's going to be for an appointed time and season uh, for even tonight uh, to make that happen. And so uh, Bishop Hammond uh, is going to uh, come tonight uh, and uh, uh, we're going to welcome him. Please stand and welcome him as he comes. of visions and purposes and plans of God, and we wait tonight, it's going to be a new refresher. Amen. Uh, I'm excited about being here tonight. There was a couple of prophets that prophesied to us at our Washington's conference and said that when you go to Azusa, there's going to be a new birthing, a new launching, and God says you're called to release an apostolic demand, a divine mandate that will complete what was begun at Azusa a hundred years ago. So, then another sister had a vision of us coming together, and when we did, it was like a rocket, and it launched, and I took off, and everyone was swept up and went up to a whole new dimension in God. And the whole Washington Conference was on a new dimension. I'd like to recognize uh, not only uh, Apostle Prophet there is here, amen, and uh, many of you, but we have, I brought 
many of our Board of Governors out here. We uh, uh, have a Board of Governors retreat every year. This time it was an advance. Amen. Well, I like all my Board of Governors, CI Ministers, and the CI people, and all the CI related people stand up. Amen.
return to people which grow and is prospering as blossoming as a rose as Isaiah said it would. Then sometimes the vision's in the person. Amen. And it doesn't make any of where you go, the vision is going to be fulfilled because the vision is in you. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't make more in California, Texas, Arkansas, India, or Ohio, or where you are. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, what nation you're in, if it's in you, it's going to be fulfilled. Yeah. I mean, you've got a vision in you. Yes, yeah. So we want to see that happen. And then, I, I, I really want to see this couple here. Wilma and Barry. <laughs> Not Barry. Fred. 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 I want to share with you that the gift of the Holy Spirit that came in Azusa in 1906, it actually first started in Charles F. Farms Bible College in Topeka, Kansas, where they got the revelation that you could receive it. And that Sister Osman that spoke Chinese for three days and continually then got the understanding of the language and then could speak the language and knew the language and minister the language and finally with the child with it. Then Brother Seymour went there and got exposed to it and came back over to Azusa Street Finally, he started praying and seeing God and pressing in. How many ever tried to press in and pray something through that you knew was supposed to happen, but it just kept lingering and lingering and lingering? And I was just reading about the original count coming out uh, and what, what really happened in Azusa with Brother Bartleman's writing way back in some other books. And I want you to know, right now we're all pressing in and believing for the Saints movement. We, we're, we, we're going to establish the Apostolic Prophetic Movement. It's 20 years old. Uh, almost, and it's going forward, it's through the will of God, it's expanding, it's growing, it's covering the world. But there is now a preparation for the saints' movement. Mm-hmm. And that's where God's going to move in the ministers, the marketplace, where God's going to take it to the streets, where the kingdom of God's going to start being demonstrated in every area, every place. And I believe this place is going to be a new breed, a new yeah. connection. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be that whole new dominion. Amen? You're not going to be a Saul order, you're going to be a new David order. Come you on. can't put Saul's on or on, you've got to use your sling shot. Amen? You've got to use what you've proven, use what God's given you. Amen? And when you do it, we're going to see a breakthrough and a breakout here, and we're going to see a touch in the poor, we're going to see a touch in the needy, we're going to see that. Jesus said, I came to heal the sick, heal, uh, deliver the oppressed, and long the oppressed people out here, probably in housing and different things, and the poor, and the sick, but they're not only just going to be merciful, they're going to demonstrate the mercy of God, the healing the sick, through the miracles of God, and they're going to change the whole community. We have one of our Come ministers on. in New Jersey, they, they went in and changed the whole block, wiped out triplex movies and other kind of houses, and went in and broke out the dope addicts, the pimp, and everything else, and made a beautiful park out of it in a great big church. Wow. Hallelujah. Now the city said, can you take another block or two parks? I believe it's transformation time. It's changing time. We've got a new vision nowadays in the prophetic apostolic that's bigger than just trying to build my church so I can be a successful pastor. That's bigger than the kingdom of God and reach out to the whole areas of the kingdom. So I'm going to take just about uh, 10 minutes of my message here and share with you the fact that most uh, people in Pentecost didn't get a full revelation of all the purposes for praying in tongues. Some just started teaching it to witness. It's a confirmation. It's proof that you had the baptism of the Holy Ghost for speaking in tongues. And I remember back in the 50s when I started praying for people to receive the Holy Ghost, uh, there began to develop a teaching on tarrying, because that's what they did until they got it. They tarried, they tarried. And I remember one brother came up one day to receive the Holy Ghost. He was like me, had more beaks and waves. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, I said, what do you want, brother? He said, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. And I said, uh, well, how long have you been seeking for it? He said, I've been seeking for it for 20 years. <laughs> he became a professional seeker. You know, you can become a professional prayer and never a believer. You can become a professional seeker and never a receiver. And so, suddenly the Holy Ghost just moved on me and I just said, Jesus, name, receive the Holy Ghost. Popped him on the head and said, like, hit him with the back. He went, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, speaking in tongues, amen. 
heavily shocked into it. <laughs> they said, I got it, it's an evidence. But you know, they're saying that it is the evidence, but to just say speaking in tongues is just evidence, and now you got it, you don't need to speak in tongues anymore, is not right. That's right. That's why like getting married, say to your now kiss the bride. Okay, you kissed her, don't forget it now. <laughs> You're officially married. Now that's just the beginning. That's right. You see, that's just the beginning. And I, I want to cover just about uh, five or thirty reasons why you should speak in tongues and why God gave the tongues of the Holy Ghost in that country. Amen. So if you turn your Bible, you've got to learn to be led of the Spirit. How many learn to be led of the Spirit? Good. Open your Bibles where the Spirit directs. I'm going to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said, but you shall receive power. Now in old Pentecost, we said that was dynamite, so we just went to church and exploded. <laughs> I mean, we just yell, scream, holler, run the aisles, jumped up and down, and we just had a Holy Ghost time. Um, emotional exuberance and was good, blessed. One sister told me one time, says, don't you feel ashamed for all that wildfire you had in Pentecost? I said, we had more fun in our wildfire than you did in your Presbyterian ice caves. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Presbyterian. You know, nobody follows an ice truck, everybody follows a fire truck. <laughs> But you shall receive power. That's not dynamite, that's dunamis. It comes from a dynamo. And I'm going to explain that to you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon me. And you shall be, not only talk, but be witnesses to me in all the world starting at home base and reaching out. Now I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I want to just share a few things with you about why speak in tongues. Now let me show you. You shall receive power after you receive the Holy Ghost. Now here's what happens. It works like a dam of water. How many's ever been over, have been through a dam of water where they got the dynamos down there and they got the big dam and you got the water gates, you got the turbines, you got the reservoir. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the reservoir full. How many's ever been around a dam? You've ever driven by one? I was I was prophesying one night over this brother in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he's prophesying. I was going down and I saw in my spirit there was a restriction there that like a dam that's holding back the water or the flow of God's purpose in his life. And I was trying to, as, as I was seeing that, I was trying to figure out how to say it, that, that God's going to remove that water uh, uh, dam there. And, I said, and it didn't get quite from here or here to here. It didn't quite make it. And God said, and I said, God said he's going to remove that dam. Filled, and you, if you've been in the water down, 
And you see that the water there is good, clean, clear water in this reservoir. It's good for fishing, it's good for boating, it's good for bathing, it's good for a lot of things. It's good evangelical water. You can catch fish, you can go swimming, you can go boating, but you don't have any power. Come on. Come on, the water's not producing any power. So what do they do? They have a water gate there in that water dam. It's an opening, and they open that gate, a big wide, and there is a, like an old Mississippi paddle wheel, a turbine there, and when the water goes over that turbine, it starts turning, and it starts moving a big dynamo down in that bottom of that dam, and it starts producing electricity. We're probably, even this electrical here is probably might be coming from a dam. I don't know where you get your electricity here, do you? Until it goes out, you don't worry. All right. <laughs> but the electricity is produced. Power is produced. Now Jesus said, you shall receive power after you receive the Holy Ghost. Or, or you shall receive power when the water flows over the water gate. Come on. Now here's the water gate. Your water gate might not be as big as mine, but I got a big open water gate. Here's the turban. You're tough. Are you with me? This is the turban. So when the when your reservoir is full, you open the water gate and you let that river, Jesus said, John 7, 37 through 39, that when the Holy Spirit came, out of your innermost being would flow rivers of living water. Say it, rivers of living water. <laughs> it'll flow, it'll flow. So when you let this river start flowing, and it flows over, it starts turning that thing, dynamo is generating. So when you start going, Jesus, I love you, praise God, you're wonderful, you just fill up the reservoir more and more and more. And it'll just get running over, don't you? But until you open the water gate, the mouth, and let the river flow over that turban, and let your tongue start flapping. <laughs> Amen? And you start going, I think I'm a look on my stuff, I'm looking at two, and I'm looking at some of them, and I'm looking at them. And then it starts, and it starts going, mmm, 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 mmm. And it generates the power of God. You see, we never worry about trying to get outside, outside source power. We have our own power generator built in with you. You know, if you, if you need anything, generate power. But you don't have the power unless you generate it. Come on. Come on. And you need to speak in tongues every day. Now, I, I can't elaborate on this, but it, it, the Holy Ghost baptism doesn't do you a lot of good unless you speak in tongues. But you don't have it till you do speak in tongues. Now, your reservoir is filled. Every good born again person has got the Holy Spirit. You have Christ in you. But when you speak in tongues, or when you let the open the water gate, or let the water flow, it produces the power. Because Jude says, in Jude verse 20, you build up yourself in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. How many want more faith? How many ever said God increased my faith? Then you have to pray. As you pray in tongues, it builds up your faith because it's a work of the Holy Spirit. And what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The, the, what's the attribute of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, faith, yeah. goodness, you know. And as you pray in the Spirit, it's a Spirit flowing, and if you overflow your river, it's just going to saturate you with goodness and love. Yeah. I check, and then Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by, the by praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I challenge any of you, to get along with God, pray for one hour in tongues, and get up still angry and upset and discouraged. Come on. Are you with me? Yeah. See, you should be praying in tongues all the time. Every chance you get. Driving down the road, I pray in tongues. You should be cleaning the floor, praying in tongues, working on the job. As long as you can pray in tongues and not disturb your work or your activity, do it. That's right. Or you keep your conscious mind operating while your subconscious mind or your spirit praying to God. Amen? Another good, another good reason you pray in tongues is you need to charge your battery. How many ever felt? Look. I remember.